Okay, I'm going to talk to you about Utoons. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the Utoons Media Server. This is a neat bit of uh, programming which allows you to share over the internet and on a local network if you want to um, your media from your computer. That could be a Windows, Mac, or Linux box as well. Um, what it does is it basically sets up a little server which allows you to stream um, your iTunes library and indeed some uh, shared folders if you wish, uh, some, some folders that you, you have media in which isn't in your iTunes library, um, to a location anywhere in the world effectively. If you've got an internet connection and a browser, uh, you're able to get to your media. So you can never be without your songs. The application, um, as I say, runs in Mac, Windows and Linux. Um, it's $19.99. Um, there is a front-end application for the iPhone, specifically for the iPhone, available on the App Store. That's very useful too. That actually streams, uh, again, your media to your iPhone. Works quite well over 3G uh, and the Edge, certainly in the UK. I haven't had too many problems with that. Uh, and seems pretty efficient. Um, you do need the, the media server in the background to actually make that work, um, but uh, you know once it's there, it, it's, it's a really useful tool. Um, there isn't a demo that you can download to try. However, the developer has given us the option of trying a setup helper program, which just runs through a few checks um, to make sure that the application will run uh, within your environment. Um, that comes down, if you download it from the link there, that comes down um, as a zip file uh, and it's relevant to your particular op operating system. So this is a Mac app file. So if we run it, uh, basically what it does is it goes off and checks a few things. Now, um, one of the things that you need to have in place is a, um, an open port to the internet. Um, so that the media can be streamed over the internet to the, the receiving device. Um, if you understand the concepts of TCP IP ports, then it, this will be fairly easy for you. However, um, you have to understand that uh, by default, um, a lot of um, traffic um, from your computer and your, your home network to the outside world is blocked by your computer and your router, maybe, if you have a routing device. Um, and it's critical for the safe working of the machine to, to try and restrict some of the uh, ports and keep it secure. However, there is uh, you know several ports that it's okay to open up and th this application uses port 1979 which is you know, pretty secure, not so bad. So we're going to run the tests. Um, it's going to check for a few things here. It's going to check that uh, port 1979 is actually available. Nothing else is using it. There may be another service using it. It's going to check the internet connection by going out to Google. Because I've got a program called Little Snitch running, um, I'm going to, just going to have to allow that transaction. Um, it's going to check the internet connection. One other thing it's going to do is to check that um, the main server um, that is run by Utoons um, can be seen and can actually see um, this machine. Um, that's quite critical because one of the things that the developer off offers as part of the um, subscription or part of the uh, cost is a subscription for a year to a service which allows um, a plain English um, translation of your external IP address. So effectively what you get is um, a uh, uh, a plain English URL, uh, a subdomain, personalized subdomain as he says here, so one year of that, yourname.utunes.com and what that does is that directs all traffic um, to that address to what the uh, Utunes servers know as your external IP address and when you sign up for an ISP you'll get an, a unique external IP address that may change during the course of the, the life of your connection, but uh, Utoons will know where it is and will be able to hook up to it. So you don't have to remember an IP address. Um, and you need to fear, if you, if you decide to go for the application, once you've done the test, it will take you into this page. Uh, first name, last name, username, that's what this is going to be, the your name at Utoons. It's also going to be the way that you log in locally to the server, uh, username and password, confirm that password and get an email. Uh, address in there. You can use Google or PayPal to pay for it. Once you've uh, paid for it, um, you can uh, download it. Um, again, whatever the uh, particular uh, OS you're using, it will come down specific to that. So here it is, Utoons Mac. Um, that's the folder it's created for me and it's just the app file again. Now I've already loaded this so what I'm going to do is just fire up um, Launchbar 
which is a quick way of getting to my applications and run Utoons. Now that basically is running the application um, in the background. Um, it's not an automated process so that when you log in to the machine in the morning um, it won't happen automatically. You would have to physically run it in that way or from the Windows shortcut or whatever. Now if you do want to automate that you have to put it into the startup process that's relevant to your OS. So I'm just going to log in here. Again I've set this up already so it should be fairly quick to log in uh, and there we are. This is the, the interface um, of the application. It, uh, it's running Java. Um, and the interface that you're seeing, we'll see here in a minute, uh, is um, what, where you can do your administrative work on your local machine, which is hosting the media. And, and, and uh, so this is basically, at this stage, picking up my um, iTunes library. Um, so this is where you can do the administration of your local machine uh, and, and how that distributes the media. And this is also what somebody or yourself would see if you logged in remotely from a remote terminal. So again, you'd see that same login screen. You'd log in with your username and password, and um, you'd, you'd see this interface, including all the all the bits and pieces down here. Now you're seeing a lot of things down here. A lot of this is coming from iTunes, um, the, the genius stuff. Um, we've got here the iTunes GJ podcast, TV shows, all coming from there. And some of these things have got. Um, uh, you know, Pandora here, Last FM, MP3 Tunes. These are sort of services that the developers built in. You can sign into your um, your accounts on those services, and you'll see um, you'll be able to interface with those again remotely if you wish to. They're crossed out at the moment because although they're enabled, um, there's no username and password against them. The preferences are behind the spanner here, and this is the uh, the admin page. If I go to my account and edit my account settings. Um, these are all the various options down the left hand side here. So radio is enabled. Now this is where you could set up um, streamed radio from the internet. Um, that can be uh, displayed and, and, and accessed from within the interface. I'm going to disable that. In iTunes you can disable certain um, of the folders here. I would like to see my music and movies and my TV but I don't really want to see anything else for instance. So I can disable all those. Last FM, not really keen on that. Pandora I can't get to because I'm in the UK. I'll take out MP3 tunes. Now other you can have here um, folders, scanned folders. Um, this is for media that might not be within your iTunes library for whatever reason. Um, and you can add folders to scan. I've got one already set up here. So if I click on that, you can see I've already got one set up here on an external volume, um, uh, which is a video folder. Um, but it's going to ask you for your iTunes password and you're going to have to put a long hand path to that folder and click on add folder. Um, I'm going to save at this point. Now, Effectively, um, you do have other options here. You've got a session which you can change, change bit rates uh, and various other things. You can scrub your podcasts, scrub all screen streams. Um, you can do transcoding on the fly. Um, you can do uh, art. You can show the art uh, of a, a particular album if it's available within iTunes um, and various other things in there. I might go into that in a bit more detail in another, another stream, screencast at some point. If we close that out of the way, now although I've disabled a lot of the things down this side, they're not showing as, as gone. If I click this button here, which is a reload button, you should see that now I've actually taken an awful lot more out of it. I'm only showing music, movies, TV shows from my IP from my iTunes uh, library. Now, um, if I just sort of uh, double click on one of these here, um, it will play. Um, now, whether you're hearing that or not, I don't know. It might not be actually uh, picking this up uh, on the stream, but uh, that is now playing and you have full control over it from pause button here through to uh, previous next buttons. You can shuffle, you can mute, you can uh, adjust the volume and you can clear the playlist there. Um, now that's all very well if you've actually got as far as setting it up. Uh, as I say, this is now running. Um, if I simply log out of it here, the, the server is still running in the background. It's still running in the background until you shut the machine down. So if you were uh, off-site uh, or on your iPhone, you'd still be able to get to your media. Um, and but obviously the machine has to be running, it has to be connected to the internet for you to be able to do that. You, you, you have to leave it on and, and up and running.